Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do our first practice problem, uh, first type of vector practice problems, and a real classic problem is they're going to give you a whole bunch of different vectors, and they're going to say find the magnitude as well as the direction of the resultant vector. Now, here's the thing. The resultant vector, okay, is going to be the sum of all of your vectors. So what you're going to want to do with these types of problems is find out the x and y components for all four of these vectors that I have right here. And once I find the components for all four of those vectors, we're just going to add them together, and that will give me my resultant vector. So let's go ahead and go at it. So let's call this 10 Newton. What we'll do is we'll call this A. I'll call this vector B. I'll call this vector C. And let's call this one vector D. And let's go ahead and find the x and y components for each vector. Let's take a look at vector A first in the x component. Notice how what we'll do is we'll set up our axis to where to the right is positive x, straight up is positive y, and we'll set wherever the, that starting point, we'll call that the origin. Okay, so the x component of A, notice how it is adjacent to this angle, and it's going in the positive direction. So this will be a positive 10, cosine of 60 degrees, and as for the y component, the y component of A is opposite my angle, and it's going positive. So it's going to be a positive 10 sine of 60 degrees, which we know that cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, and so uh, 10 times 1 half is 5. Now, for a sine of 60 degrees, we know square root of 3 over 2, um, but let's go ahead and put that into our calculator. That way we can kind of usually, they want us to round to two decimal places normally, and so let's go ahead and get comfortable with that. And so, um, if I wanted to do 10 sine of 60 degrees, make sure your mode is actually in degrees. Very important that that occurs, because if it's in radians, it's going to just jack everything up. Okay, so we're going to go 10 sine of 60 degrees, and that gives me 8.66. 8.66. Cool. And so this is vector A. We'll be using that in a sec. Let's do vector B. For vector B, notice how it is completely in the x direction. It has no y component. And so it's because of that vector B is literally going to be you got all five, all five newtons going in the x direction and nothing going in the y direction, so it's going to be 5, 0. Let's take a look at vector c. For vector c, it's different. For vector c, this time you have nothing going in the x direction. So the x component of c is going to be 0. But as for the y component, notice how it's completely in the y direction, and it's negative. So the y component is going to be a negative 30. Finally, if I wanted to find the components for vector d, the x components is in the negative x direction. And not only is it in the negative x direction, but it's adjacent to this angle. So because it's going negative x, it's going to be a negative. And then my magnitude is 8. And because it's adjacent, we're going to go cosine of 30 degrees. And as for the y component, my y component is still positive, but it's opposite my angle. And so it'll be a positive 8. And then sine, because it's opposite, sine of 30 degrees, which, okay, cosine of 30 degrees, that's square root of 3 over 2, but let's go ahead and actually put that in our calculator. So we're going to have negative 8 cosine of 30 degrees, and whenever you get that, you get negative, we'll call it, what, 6.93? So negative 6.93, and sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so we know this to be 4. And this is my vector d. So now that I have vector A, B, C, and D, let's find my resultant vector. Your resultant vector is literally just going to be the sum of all four of these vectors. And we learned in the previous video how to add vectors. To find the x component of my resultant vectors, let's put this up. To find the x component of my resultant vectors, you're literally just going to add the x components of well, all your vectors. And so here, 5 plus 5 is 10. Okay, right? 5 and 5 is 10. And then C had 0. And this had minus, minus 6.93. And so we're going to have 3.07 in the x. 3.07 in the x. And as for the y, let's figure those out. So I've got an 8.66 
plus, well, 0. And then, well, I guess let's go minus 30, right, minus 30. And then here, plus 4. And what we get is negative 17.34. Negative 17.34. So this is your resultant vector. Your resultant vector is as follows. But what it wanted, it wanted the magnitude as well as the direction. The direction is where it can get tricky. So let's do the magnitude first, right? It's a little bit easier. The magnitude of my resultant vector, okay, is equal to, if you remember, it's the square root of your x term squared, so 3.07 squared, plus your y component squared, so it's going to be negative, 17.34 squared and let's go ahead and put that into our calculator so 3.07 squared plus the negative 17.34 squared and then don't forget to take the square root and we get 17 we'll call it 0.61 right so the magnitude is 17.61 cool but what about my direction well Let's see where this vector is. So let's see. Notice how I have a positive x, a positive 3.07, but a negative y component, negative 17.34. That tells me I'm in the fourth quadrant. It tells me I'm in the fourth quadrant because in my change in x, 3.07, change in y, negative 17.34, your vector is going to look like this. Now the angle that they normally want, nine times out of ten I would say, is the angle made with the positive x-axis. This is, and we'll call that angle theta. Theta is what we're looking for, but there's no way that I can do this in the calculator by just plugging in uh, like an arc tangent or something. You can't do that. But one thing that I can do, let's actually find this angle instead. I'll call it phi. What this angle is going to be, I do have enough information to find this because I have a right triangle. And opposite this right triangle, I have a magnitude of 17.34. And adjacent to this angle phi, I have a magnitude of 3.07. And so if I have an opposite and I have an adjacent, remember I told y'all to remember, uh, oops, that's not this one. Uh, remember I told y'all to remember that tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. So we're going to use tangent in order to find the angle, in order to find the direction of, well, phi. So let's figure out what that is. So I know that tangent phi is equal to an opposite 17.34 over an adjacent 3.07. I understand this is a negative 17.34. I'm fully aware of that. The thing is, is I don't care where this is. I just want to find out what that angle is, okay? And so we know that phi is going to be the arc tangent, 17.34 over 3.07. So let's go ahead and do that. So you're going to go arc tangent, 17.34 divided by 3.07. And I get an angle, we'll call that 80 degrees, right? Let's go ahead and call this 80 degrees, okay? Well, that's not my final answer, because this angle right here was 80 degrees. But I'm looking for this entire angle, and how can I find that? Well, I can find theta. I know the full circle is, what, 360? It's 360 degrees minus this angle phi minus this 80 degrees, and that'll give me my theta. And so 360 minus 80 is simply 280 degrees. And so this, 9 times out of 10, like I said, the direction they're looking for is the angle made with the positive x-axis. So just be constantly aware of how to deal with that, but that's the general use to how to find the direction of a given vector. Okay, Let's get a little bit tougher, so join me in the next couple of videos, and we'll try some other type of problems so you can see how... Uh, vector practice problems in your physics course is going to be asked.